Hi guys, Matt from Haltech here and today we're going to be talking about communication protocols and CAN networks. We're going to look at what you can and cannot do with the Haltech CAN expansion devices and we're going to explain how to wire up and connect Haltech CAN devices into the Haltech CAN network. So we get quite a few questions on CAN networks. These questions range from the simple, how do I connect my CAN wideband unit into my Elite Series ECU, to the much more complex, how do I integrate my OEM CAN bus into a Howtech ECU or display dash? So today, what we're gonna try and attempt to do is to give you a broad overview of what a CAN network is, how we interface with CAN networks in the Howtech ecosystem, and all the things that you can and cannot do on a Howtech CAN network. And finally, we're going to discuss the physical connection of devices on the Howtech CAN bus network. So, get your pocket protector ready, because it's going to get nerdy. So first things first, what is the CAN network or CAN bus? Well, firstly, CAN is actually an acronym, and it stands for Control Area Network. So there's some clues right there to what CAN is. CAN is a communication network that allows multiple electronic devices to communicate with one another in an orderly fashion. Now, it was originally designed specifically for automotive applications, but it's since been adopted into a number of industrial and commercial applications as well. All right, so if CAN communication is a signal protocol, does that mean that all devices that have any sort of CAN integration can just be plugged into the network and operate correctly? Well, yes and no. Within the Haltech ecosystem, this is how we do things. So you purchase a Haltech wideband controller or a thermocouple amplifier, you make the CAN connections to the ECU, and yes, these devices get recognized on the network and immediately are available to be used for engine control functionality. However, this relatively seamless integration of CAN devices is limited to Howtech devices on the Howtech bus. And that is because every manufacturer's CAN network protocol is different. See, almost all modern vehicles have a CAN network, which is communicating information around the vehicle from different electronic control units. But the communication language, or protocol, as it's known, is vastly different from manufacturer to manufacturer, and even from one year model to the next. So CAN is the general term for a type of communications network that we're using. From a physical connection perspective, there's always two wires in a CAN bus network. It's CAN high and CAN low. And in the Howtech CAN bus wiring, we also bundle in power and ground wires for simple connection and powering up of auxiliary devices. Now the beauty of CAN networks is when configured correctly, you can actually just keep stacking more and more devices onto the network because each device has its own unique identifier and the information that it's communicating to the other devices on the network is laid out in an orderly and specific format. Now one way I've heard it described is that CAN communication can be thought of like a train on a track and at a specific time interval the train is sent down the track. That train has a set number of carriages and in each carriage there's a set number of seats and each seat is set aside for a specific person or packet of information in this case. So for example, when I plug um, a wideband O2 controller into the Howtech CAN network for my Elite or Nexus ECU, there's already a seat on the train set aside for wideband sensor information. And any devices on the network that have been programmed to receive information from a single channel wideband O2 controller already know to look in the specific carriage at the specific seat that this information will be located. If there's any other devices on the network that really don't need to know about Wideband O2 or they haven't been programmed to receive the Wideband O2 data, then they simply ignore any or all of that information that's being transmitted on the O2 sensor data field. Now, by now, you're probably starting to see that for any device on the CAN network to be able to send or receive information to another device on the network, that the other device needs to know what information to look for and where to look for it. And this is where not all CAN buses are created equal. In fact, every manufacturer's CAN bus addresses things vastly differently. Or to come back to the train analogy, Different manufacturers have trains moving at different speeds, they can vary the number of carriages on the train, and the seat assignment is almost certainly different for every individual packet of information. Which is why you can't just mix and match CAN devices from one manufacturer to the other. Now the more experienced of you guys out there would know, if you look closely at the Howtech software, on most of our ECUs you can actually enable multiple CAN buses. 
And if you look at the top of an Elite 2500 ECU, you see there's a CAN port in the pocket cover on the top of the case. But there's also another CAN port in the flying lead harness, which is wired directly into the main connectors at the front of the ECU. Now the reason for that is so you can actually communicate CAN information on more than one bus at a time. More importantly, you can communicate on more than one CAN protocol at a time. The most common use for this functionality is so that in addition to the ECU receiving CAN data from say a Haltech Wideband O2 controller, you can also send out information on an OBD2 style communication format for things like a Bluetooth OBD transmitter. So you can get engine information into a phone app like Talk Pro or Dash Command. And before you ask, no, we don't have any affiliations with these companies. I'm just saying these are the sorts of things you can do with another CAN bus. There are also a limited number of OEM CAM protocols that can be selected to send engine data to the OEM dash cluster. This is just another example where you may be using the Howtech CAM bus to send and receive Howtech specific data like Wideband 2 keypad control or EGT information around the Howtech bus and then you'd enable a second CAM bus to send OEM protocol information to an OEM dash cluster. Now each of these CAM buses need to be physically wired separately to separate CAN bus outputs on the ECU. Now it's worth noting here that all Haltech CAN devices must be on the same Haltech bus. So you can't plug say a Haltech Wideband O2 controller into the pocket cover on the top of the ECU and then plug an IO12 input output expander into the CAN network at the front of the ECU. All the Haltech devices need to be and will be on the same bus. Now this is also the case for the Nexus R5 unit which has three independent CAN bus networks all the Haltech devices must be on the same physical CAN bus connection. I can't stress that enough. So now that we've got a bit of an idea of what a CAN network is and how it works, let's take a look at all the different Haltech CAN devices that we sell here and how you connect them up in Planet Haltech. So the most popular CAN device that we sell is our CAN Wideband O2 controller. These guys come in single and dual channel formats and we have both a Bosch and NTK sensor version. Oh, we also have thermocouple amplifiers. We have two, four and eight channel variants. Uh, as well as input output expanders like the IO12 which offers you an additional four digital inputs, four analog inputs and four digital pulse outputs. We have high temperature and pressure monitoring units uh, in both a valve stem cap and internal wheel mount configuration. For our Nexus customers we've got both uh, an 8 and a 15 channel keypad available and to make all of these connections as simple as possible we also have these four port CAN hubs. Oh and I almost forgot Arguably the most important device of all, the ECU. The Elite 550, 750 and 950 and the VMS units have only one CAN bus. The 1000, 2000, 1500 and 2500 units, they've got two CAN buses and the Nexus R5 has three. But remember, all Haltech devices will be on the same bus. So it's entirely possible to add a Wideband O2 controller, four channel thermocouple amplifier, a dash and a tire pressure and monitoring system to an Elite 550 ECU because they're all Haltech devices. What you can't do with an Elite 550 is have all of these Caltech CAN devices as well as a CAN to OBD2 cable to send information out on an OBD2 protocol because the 550 has got only one CAN port so you have to choose which protocol you want, Haltech or OBD2. Now that's not the case with the 1000, the 1500, 2000 and 2500 on the Nexus because they've got multiple CAN buses. You can use one bus for the Haltech, one to go to OBD2. When it comes to physically making the CAN connections from the device to the ECU, CAN networks are relatively forgiving and any Haltech device would generally come with all the adapters and cables that you require pre-terminated to just plug it on in. But if there is ever a need to make a connection into the CAN bus, it's really simply a matter of splicing into the CAN high and CAN low wires anywhere you like. And that's effectively what the four port CAN hub does. These hubs allow you to add more devices into the network by simply plugging a new device into the hub and going. Now, one thing that is worth noting, however, is that the more devices that are attached and the longer the run of CAN wiring in the network, the greater the importance there is to ensure that the CAN bus terminating resistors are all in the right place. So what are these terminating CAN resistors that I speak of? Well, put simply, terminating resistors on a CAN network prevent signal rebound. The longer the run of wire is in the network, the higher the likelihood of getting a signal rebound and therefore the more important it is to ensure that you have terminating resistors in place. Now, 
There's a whole world of technical speak that could be discussed here around CAN network wiring that revolves around twisted pairs, the number of twists per inch, inductance, resistance, a whole bunch of things that are really interesting to someone I'm sure, but they bear no real relevance to our application because the thing that really matters is that the devices that have terminating resistors turned on are at each end of the bus. Now that's normally going to be the ECU and the dash and they're built into the devices and you can turn them on and off in the software. Now, if all this talk of resistors and terminating stuff is getting confusing, don't lose too much sleep over it. Because in nearly all motor vehicle applications and the stuff that we do, the length of the wiring in the network is actually short enough that there's not an appreciable amount of signal bounce anyways. So it doesn't actually make a lot of difference if you have the terminating resistors on or off or whatever. I really only mention terminating resistors because in some installations where the network wiring is really long, like a boat or maybe a rear-engined air-cooled Volkswagen bus, it can be an important factor in the accuracy of the CAN data stream. Now, to summarize all this information, CAN networks are a really robust digital communication protocol that are commonly used in automotive applications. Adding Haltech CAN devices into the Haltech CAN network is as simple as plugging the device in, turning the functionality on in the software, and you're ready to go. CAN expansion devices allow Haltech users to expand ECU functionality in a simple and affordable manner without having to rewire the entire vehicle to get more functionality. And finally, and possibly most importantly, given that here in Sydney, where we're shooting this video, we've been stuck in lockdown for who knows how many weeks now, I'm gonna give away three of these Haltech caps to cover up those cow licks, receding hairlines, and newly acquired mullets to the first three people who can correctly put in the comments below what the most popular Haltech CAN device is. And with that said, Ring the bell icon to receive notifications on all of our YouTube videos. Subscribe to the newsletter for promotions um, and new product information. Give us a like, a heart, a thumbs up, an eggplant emoji, whatever it is on all of the socials. I'm Matt from Haltech and I'll see you next time.